The history of British horror is deeply tied to the story of Hammer Films, a British production company based in London, known best for churning out low-budget gothic horror movies from a golden age which ran from 1955 to 1976. The history of Hammer Films is a rich and interesting one, with works such as The Curse of Frankenstein and Dracula rightfully at the forefront of conversation. I want to focus on Val Guest's 1957 minor classic, The Abominable Snowman, a visually striking horror adventure seethed with meticulous pacing, ominous atmosphere, and a memorable performance by Peter Cushing, who carries the cast. Writer Nigel Neal and television director slash producer Rudolf Cartier had collaborated on several BBC dramas. The next production had been The Creature, a morality play written by Neal about a search for the mysterious Yeti in the Himalayas. Neil wished to write a story about the Yeti that would not make him a monster. He was influenced by numerous reports of the Yeti that had appeared in the news at the time. Hammer Films purchased the rights to the creature on November 2nd, 1956. They had enjoyed success with the Quartermass Experiment, 1955, an early remnant of sci-fi horror that would later navigate Hammer's trajectory towards gothic horror. Val Guest, who had directed the two Quartermass films in collaboration with Neil, would end their partnership after completion of The Abominable Snowman. Nigel Neal wrote the screenplay, which is a generally faithful adaptation of his original television script. It was initially titled The Snow Creature, until it was discovered there was a 1954 film of the same name. Although Neal was the only credited screenwriter, Guest performed his own rewrite of the script in advance of production, removing a lot of dialogue he felt to be unnecessary. The plot boils down to a kindly English botanist and a gruff American scientist who lead an expedition to the Himalayas in search of the legendary Yeti. Dr. Rollison, this is the, this is the expedition that's not going to fail. We're going to find that creature they call the Yeti. The film is, in many ways, more of a psychological thriller than a traditional horror film. Both the claustrophobic isolation of the Himalayas and the tension between members of the expedition play far more prominent roles in the narrative than do the Yetis. The film exercises a certain eerie influence. The ominous eastern themed music, bells and chants that dominate the soundtrack exude a sense of impending doom. The gorgeous monastery set could just have easily been used as a purposeless backdrop, instead heightens danger and a conspiracy of silence by the local people. A view echoed by Hammer historians Marcus Hearn and Alan Barnes is that the film conveys a taut, paranoid atmosphere set largely in wide open spaces. It's remarkably claustrophobic in scale. The film was shot in an anamorphic widescreen format called Regal Scope, renamed Hammer Scope by the company. Guest found it an unsatisfactory format to work in, which made getting in close to the actors rather difficult and required careful framing of scenes. I however believe these wide lens shots are a true benefit, capturing paranoia through expanded desolate landscapes. It's rather isolating, but knowing the expedition party are not alone in a place where they should be alone is all the more terrifying especially when what is out there is coming after them and can't be seen for the most part. The film is a product of the anxieties of the atomic age, constant reminders of the H-bomb along with fairly obvious message of how man will inevitably cause his own destruction plays a prominent role in the narrative. It's an interesting twist for the Yeti, rather than portrayed as a mindless beast is an intelligent adversary biding time for man to destroy itself and take over the planet. The theme of what it means to be civilised also features prominently. This is notable given the fact that the late 1950s were the beginning of the end of British imperialism. As for the characters, Peter Cushing carries much of the cast, giving a strong performance as Dr. Rollison, the expedition member with evidently the most humanity. This is probably the youngest I've seen him look on screen. He is the only party member with honest intentions searching for the snowman. His obsession to find proof of these creatures' existence coincides with presumably his own demise. The film makes itself no stranger to this, heavily implying that he will not return from his journey. John, for the last time I'm asking you, don't go. Look, Dad. You won't come back, I know it, I'll never see you again. Tom Friend, the expedition leader, played by Forrest Tucker, is a stark contrast to the noble Cushing. His reasons for pursuing the Yeti are greedy and cynical. His continual clash of morality with Rollison is great tension and pays off later when the two have to set aside their differences to survive. The remaining crew are fine, mostly stereotypes that deliver on their roles. 
There's the expert hunter, the native guide, an inexperienced climber who is somewhat ultra sensitive to his environment and can sense when the yetis are around. Overall it's not a bad crew, just not particularly memorable. The Lama, played by Arnold Marl, is an interesting one. The Village Prophet. The secrets are just as mysterious as his supposed psychic powers. I wasn't sure if this character was fleshed out enough or is deliberately ambiguous. It was probably a combination of both. I'm still not 100% sure why the Lama had his servant stop and sedate Rollison's wife Helen. This is never really brought up again. I think the subplot of Helen and Rollison's associate, Peter Fox, mounting a rescue mission is fine too. The addition of the character Helen, played by Maureen Connell, is named after Cushing's wife. This was prompted by Cushing's desire to flesh out Rollison's character by representing a woman's point of view of the obsession with the Yeti. Why did we come up here, John? Why? Right up here, so far out of the way. It wasn't just to, to search for rare plants, was it? Was it, John? No. Somehow I knew. I kept remembering the things you wrote once. I said nothing. I didn't want to remind you. I, I'd hoped you'd forgotten. The release of the film was overshadowed somewhat by the huge success of Hammer's The Curse of Frankenstein, released in the same year. It was a relative financial failure, a fact Val Guest attributed to the intelligence of the script. All things considered, the abominable snowman is worth a watch. The rather slow pacing of the film can be a drag for some, but I found it satisfactory for building up fear of the unseen creature. Peter Cushing never disappoints when attached to a horror project. I do not recommend watching this film with a group. It's a better experience alone, as you will miss much detail talking with your mates. It's not Hammer's best work, but it's a good start to their horror run.